Welcome back to the old Iron Rover channel. Uh, my name is Bob and I'm the host here. Uh, and uh, this, don't let the apron and the shop setting here fool you. There's going to be uh, nothing about machining in this video. It's, it's something that uh, came upon us and we had to deal with it and it, I found it was kind of interesting. Uh, something I'd never seen before. I, I think uh, so many folks that are heavily into the construction business or into uh, you know, plumbing and things, you might find uh, this is pretty boring, but it's, it's my show. I guess I get to decide what I show. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess without further ado, let's just get on with it. So here's the overview of our, our project we're doing. Um, our 60-year-old sewer line has been problematic for some time. It's got a couple of offsets in it in the, uh, in, in the, back, in the front yard. And... Uh, you know, we've been fighting roots over the years and managed to keep it at bay. But uh, a little while ago, it just locked up tight. It f did nothing flowed. Not one drop of water would flow through that pipe. So we decided it's time. We've been anticipating we'd have to replace it. So we're going to do a uh, tr what they call a trenchless pipe replacement. Here is the west end here where we're going to dig a trench and... Uh, this will be the place where they pull a pipe through the ground to here. And uh, that pipe, that round ring there is an old koi pond, and that's going to be in the way, but they said they would take that out for us. I was going to get rid of it anyway. Uh, the pipe runs underneath this ramp, and then underneath this courtyard wall, and out to the front. The total length of pipe from the uh, house down to the, the main line is 135 feet. This is the digger they're going to use for most of the excavation. The pipe comes out from under the house at about 8 feet uh, below ground level, below grade. And this uh, little piece of plywood you see through the digger arm there is a relief pit they put in immediately so we could use the sewer line again from there back to the house that was not plugged. Uh, it was, all the plugging was actually out here. Well, at where about the digger bucket is there, the pipe is about 11 feet underground and it makes a vertical turn and drops down to the main line with the top of which is 23 feet underground. So you're going to see some serious excavation uh, before this project is done. Here we're starting to dig that east pit out on the uh, on the uh, above the sewer line, the main sewer line, and uh, like I say, this is, a, this is a 10 by 10 hole, and it's going to go down probably about 18 feet, 20 feet, and or yeah, something in that range, and then they're going to have to uh, dig it by hand, or we're going to get a bigger digger to to finish what this one can't do. To do the digging in the courtyard, we got a, a little Kubota mini excavator. It's one of those that the tracks can slide in and out so to vary the width of the stance of the thing. And uh, the ROPS cage there uh, turned out to be problematic. Uh, I'll show you here in a second why. So uh, they actually had to remove that. So once they removed it, it lowered it quite a bit, the top of it quite a bit, so it would fit underneath this uh, gateway here. Here we're using that little mini digger to dig uh, the uh, the end of the trench, this or the, uh, the the access hole, where they're going to put the hydraulic puller that will pull the the uh, pipe through the ground, and it'll end up here where it'll be a short piece of pipe that they'll splice in between the the end of the pipe they pull in, which is a welded plastic like a polyethylene sort of pipe, and uh, the iron pipe that comes out from under the house. So uh, this little digger can dig down um, the eight feet it's needed to, to do the job there. And uh, that, again, that uh, koi, koi pond ring there, that concrete ring, I smacked it a few times with my old man's uh, hammer and it wasn't doing much good, so I figured we'll leave it to the younger guys. Um, and you see it's kind of in their way, they're going to fill it in. and. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to have some help. <laughs> uh, I can imagine me trying to break that thing up and hauling it out by hand and then having to find a place to dispose of the concrete. So uh, Anyway, they're getting tired of fighting it, so they're getting ready to break that out of there.
Yeah, that's the way I do it. And now, now they're going to have to get serious. <laughs> It's a lot bigger than my sledgehammer, too. So they broke it up very handily and they just basically carried all the parts out and put it in their spoil pile that they're going to haul off anyway. And then uh, after the, you aren't going to see it on the video, but after they got this top piece knocked out, they grabbed the bottom half with the digger and, and uh, whacked it a couple times and it broke up into oh probably about eight sections around that ring there and hauled them off so uh, it was it was nice to see because uh, that was I was looking at a lot of hand work myself which gonna take me forever these guys did a wonderful job and it was just included in the deal You just saw them trimming the ends of the pipe, uh, get them square, and now they've got it, everything clamped in. They're ready to uh, actually weld the pipe together. Um, it's pretty slick. We had about, I want to say about 70 feet of pipe, so there was like four sections they had to weld together. So they're getting this thing uh, nice and hot. And I've seen this in, in other, when I was in the mining business, uh, in large pipe, uh, 36 inch, 24 inch, uh, you know water pipe and that, things like that but um, this is just a four inch sewer pipe but it was I think a little bit interesting to see how the whole process goes without having to trench through you know tear out that wall and the ramp and all that stuff we just pulled the pipe through underground so anyway he's about got it heated up here now he's uh, welding he's forcing the ends together so you kind of mash them together so it gets a nice weld lock it in place and let it cool and then uh, he's ready to move on to the next joint that pipe is a, like a polyethylene pipe and it's a it's pretty flexible relatively speaking here we're installing the uh, the pipe breaker that goes through and breaks the old clay pipe out and in the same motion it drags that uh, that pl new plastic pipe through. So uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. I've never actually seen this before. ditch on the pulling side down. They'll be stringing a cable from here the end of the sewer line. I don't know if you can see it down there very well, but it's uh, right there on the right side. And the line they're going to hook it to is underneath uh, this side over here. Just to uh, see what uh, what I was seeing. There are some of the pieces that came out of the hole. So. Yeah, that's a pretty good chunk of root. <laughs> so we'll try to get uh, shots from both the pulling end and as the pipe's going in on the other end.
It's not warm. There's the uh, hydraulic cable puller that's going to pull the uh, pipe through the ditch. It's all rigged up and ready to go. Well, there's the excavation as it sits now, and right over there is where the pipe that goes into the house should come through, and then it'll come across here and drop down total of 23 feet to meet the top of the, uh, of the uh, mainline sewer.
Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, uh, if you give it a thumbs up, it'll uh, probably help the uh, YouTube search bring it up more often, which you know gets me more subscribers. And speaking of which, even with this uh, the COVID nineteen stuff going on, and uh, you know I haven't done many videos, but still, apparently enough people are hanging out at home doing their doing the right thing, doing their uh, you know watching videos and generally staying away from everybody. Um, the subscribers have gone up to about 3,100, so I'm pleased with that. And, uh, you know, if you got a comment you'd like to add, I uh, think I'd like to hear, well, by all means, leave it. I try to answer pretty much all the comments. Um, and I like, you know, of course, I like to get the complimentary ones, but once in a while somebody has a better way to do something or, or something like that, and that's fine, too. Um, and then... Uh, you know, uh, of course, you always uh, welcome more subscribers. So if you if you want to subscribe, please do. And until the next video, which will be something in the machine shop again, um, happy trails.